Now I will give the floor to the tribunal's president, Judge Patrick Robinson, to give the opening remarks of this conference. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor to open this conference in the presence of so many, and I repeat, so many, distinguished guests, and I am indeed truly grateful for your attendance. The tribunal is approaching the completion of its mandate and it is time to think of what we will leave behind. We convened this conference in order to consult with you on the tribunal's legacy and to take stock of the work that is already being done to ensure that the tribunal has a lasting impact. I am convinced that through our exchange of ideas at this conference, we will have a fuller and richer vision of what the tribunal's legacy should be, and that will allow the tribunal to develop an appropriate legacy strategy. I want to stress that the legacy is not property of the tribunal for it to control. A wide range of other actors will play a critical role in preserving and promoting the legacy, and I hope that this conference will generate fresh ideas and enhance cooperation to strengthen that process. The tribunal itself has until now focused institutionally more on the question of the tribunal's legacy in the region of the former Yugoslavia than the global legacy. This has occurred largely in the context of the completion strategy which mandated the tribunal to transfer cases to the national judiciaries and assist them in capacity building. The legacy vision must be developed further and a key notion I would like to introduce in that respect is national ownership. <coughs> the countries of the region must have the means not only to continue the tribunal's work in their national legal systems, but also to have full access to the tribunal's public records and a possibility to absorb them into their national context and on their own terms. I also want to underline the importance of being honest about the tribunal's experiences and results. It is my conviction that a lasting legacy is not possible without full transparency and a critical assessment of the tribunal's work so that future generations can learn from our shortfalls as well as draw from our positive achievements of which there are many. And most importantly, the tribunal has clearly demonstrated that impunity for heinous acts against international law must not and does not have to be tolerated. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, to transform our legacy vision into reality a lot of concrete work is required. Otherwise, we risk our institutional memory disappearing into the air and the archives not being put to full use because of lack of access. The time to act is now because the tribunal has already started preparations for the transition into a residual mechanism and soon the downsizing of staff will start in earnest. Let me thank you once more for joining us here today. 
ensuring a consultative process is at the heart of this conference, and I'm certain that we have a very inspirational two days ahead of us. And finally, let me express my deep gratitude to the government of the Netherlands and the Sonela Diana Jenkins Human Rights School at the UCLA School of Law for co-sponsoring and co-organizing the event. I also wish to thank the Ministries of Foreign Affairs of Switzerland and Finland for providing additional funding. Without the generous support of these sponsors, the conference would not have been possible. Uh, thank you.